you for what you've done for me. How can I say thank you a million times? For being up strong and mighty and able, grunting, granting your favor. My heart proclaims the truth. I'm in love with you. We lift our voice to bless you. We lift our hands to reach you. We lift our hearts to love you. Holy is your wonder. We present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy is that to God. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We lift our voice to bless you. We lift our hands to reach you. We lift our hearts to love you. Holy is your wonder. We present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Tell the Lord he's good. Somebody say, Lord, you're good. Go ahead, bring that down, Steve, for me. Bring that down. Thank you. Bring that down for me. All right. Give God a big clap. Give God a big clap. Give him the biggest shout. The biggest thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on up, Sammy. Hallelujah. Come on up, Sammy. Give God one more clap offering. Good evening, uh, Spirit Bill. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is my honor and privilege to be up here on behalf of Spirit Bill Riders to inform the family that Spirit Bill Riders will be starting and kicking off their jacket. And we're throwing a little twist in there this time, blanket drive. So we're asking the family to please dig deep into your closets, in the garage. I'm sure there's a jacket in there somewhere, a blanket in there somewhere that you could donate to us so that we could take those things out to those that are less fortunate than ourselves and that we could bless them for the cold weather. So again, we're starting it. We're kicking it off tonight, and we'll be going through September. So praise the Lord, Lord. and may the, may the Creator bless all of you richly. Thank you. Amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Amen. We got my brother Johnny Clark here tonight with us tonight. He's going to fellowship with us tonight. Give God a praise for Johnny and his family, amen, his sons. And he's going to sing us a solo tonight, amen, before we get in the word tonight. And so y'all say, sing for Jesus, Johnny. Say that again. Say, sing for Jesus, Johnny. Amen. Minister Johnny, go ahead. Let the Lord use you tonight. Shadow. 
feet and give God bigger praise than that. And I know. Come on, say that out of your belly. And I on your lips tonight? How many got a praise on your lips tonight? How many got a worship in your belly tonight? Come on, give God a high praise. Come on, give God a high praise. Worship him tonight. Hallelujah, God. 
Hallelujah, God. Lord, we praise your name tonight, God. Lord, we worship you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, glory, glory. Is there anybody that got to worship in your spirit this evening? Did you come to praise him tonight? While you on your feet, put your Bibles in your hands and let's get ready for the word of the evening. Come on out of reverence, let's stand. If you can, put your Bibles in hand. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 8 through 10. 8, 11. We're going 8 through 10. 8 through 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many know God is ready to do something for somebody this evening? Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. If you have it, say amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, by faith. That's it. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that's coming forth. May it prosper. Where you send it, may it glorify your name tonight and bring honor to you. Father, have your way as I'm yielded. I decrease you, increase, and breathe into me, and then speak to me and through me. Guide my tongue, Father, to only tell the truth and speak the oracles of God. Have your way. We bind every evil thought, spirit, and imagination that's trying to rise up and fight against this message. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we speak life in this atmosphere tonight, and it's done by faith in Jesus' name. We say amen, and amen before you sit down, look somebody in their face and say, there is something in the making. Look at somebody else on the other side and say, there's something in the making. There's something in the making. Who give God a praise as you have your seats in the presence of the Lord tonight. There's something in the making. Somebody say, there's something in the making. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you tonight. As we look into the scriptures this evening, we find the writer of Hebrews writing to the believers during this time, the Jewish believers, the converts who were in the faith. The Bible says he was writing to them due to the fact that they were losing their faith because of the many obstacles, the struggles, and the circumstances that they were going through in their personal walk. Because they were dealing with things, they were beginning to think within themselves, maybe I should go back to my old habits, my old ways, or my old customs. But the writer begins to write to them to remind them how important it is that they continue in the faith of God. Look at your neighbor and say, you have to continue in faith. I don't care what it is you're dealing with in your life. It don't matter what it looks like. God said you have to continue to contend for the faith. As the Bible says, we have to fight the good fight of faith, which means no matter what it looks like, you got to fight you got to stand. You got to endure. You got to put your dupes up and be ready to swing back on the enemy and not allow the enemy to stop you from what God is trying to get you into. Do I got two witnesses this evening? I dare you to shout amen. Therefore, he's speaking about now as he begins to encourage them, he gives them the story of Abraham who is called the father of faith. And he says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. It's key to understand that faith actually only has power when faith is obeyed. When you obey, when you obey the word of faith, when you obey what God tells you, the promise, when you obey and do what God tells you to do, you are now operating and operating and activating the faith that God puts inside of you. Do I got a witness? Somebody say hallelujah. 
The Bible says by faith, word faith means to believe and to put one's trust and confidence in God. Believe so much to the point to where it causes you to make certain moves and decisions in your life. When you say I got faith, you're saying I totally rely on and I depend on God and I don't depend on anything or anybody else. When you say you got faith, you're telling the devil that it don't matter how many weapons he formed against you, you know that you're going to stand and endure and make it through because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Do I got a witness? Now, now the key thing about faith, the key thing about faith is faith has to be tested and tried. And therefore, when your faith is tested, it is going to test you to the point to see if you are going to obey God no matter what circumstance bring. It's easy to obey God when things are going according to your perfect plan. But it's at the moments where it don't look like it's lining up in your life. That's the moment where you got to ask yourself, are you going to do what God told you to do? Do I got a praise in this quiet church it was faith that made Abraham obedient the Bible says he obeyed which means he followed God's instructions and followed God's orders and what God told him to do he obeyed when he was called he obeyed when he was called this is something you got to get in your spirit that each and every one of us in this building God has called you by your name look your neighbor in the eye and say you got a calling on your life and don't you let no devil no rebel, no, no, no nasty spirit, no unclean spirit, no jealous spirit, no hating spirit, or any other kind of spirit that ain't holy. Don't let it stop you. You got a calling on you. And watch this. Because you got a calling, you have been going through. You ain't going through nothing if you ain't got nothing on your life. It's the fact that there's something on you. There is an anointing on you. There's something unique about who God created you to be. And because there's something grand in store for you, the devil has been trying to stop you and stunt you or confuse you or make you quit. But I need six praises in here tonight to shout, the devil is a liar. I'm not going anywhere. By faith he obeyed God when God called him. God called him. Listen to me. The next part I want to say to you is don't you move if God don't tell you to move. But if God say go, it's time to go. Make the move that God tell you to make. The Bible said God called him and he got up and he went. But the key thing is, this is what faith does to you. It make you get up and go to a place, watch this, that belongs to you and live in it as if it don't belong to you. The Bible says he got up, he was called to go out to the place which he would receive. He would receive as an inheritance, a special inheritance that belonged to him. And when he went out, and he went out, the Bible said he went out, keep going media, keep moving. He went out, but he what? Not knowing. Had no clue where he was going. You don't got to know everything. If you knew everything, you wouldn't need faith. You don't need faith if you are know-it-all. When God tells you to go somewhere, do a thing, or operate in a way, you don't have to know when, what, where, how. All you need to know is who told you to do it. And if you know that the Lord has spoken and the Lord has declared it, that's the only thing I need to know. The Bible says Abraham heard God's voice. God told him to get up and go, sending you to a special place. And this place that God was sending him, the Bible says he had no clue where he was going. This is key. He didn't know what was in front of him, but he knew who was guiding him. You don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. All you need to know and I need to know is who hold tomorrow in his hands. 
And I know that if God said it, and if God proclaimed it, and if God declared it, and he holds my tomorrow in his hands, then I can walk into my tomorrow with my head lifted, and with my voice praising, and with my hands raised to the sky, thanking him. Why? Because I know that at the end of this chapter, it's going to be all right. At the end of this situation, it's going to turn out all right. At the end of this testimony, you're going to see what the Lord has done. Do I got anybody that got a praise on your lips? Touch your neighbor and say, watch what he do. The Bible said he had no clue. So faith point number one, sometimes you don't know where you're going. You just know he said do it. You just know he said move. You just know he said get up and use the money that you got and invest in it. All you know is he said get up, go to the college and sign some paperwork and get back into school. I don't even know what I'm getting ready to go to school for. I just know he told me to go to school. I, 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 matter of fact, I might as well just take some basic classes until I get the real classes he want me to Y'all not talking to me tonight. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. He just told me to make the move, come over here and sit here and be in this place. I don't know why I was compelled to do this. But either or, you don't have to know why. Just know what he's going to do in the midst of it. Do I got a witness? The Bible says that by faith, what did he do next? He dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. He's in. He came into his promise. But he was living in the promise as if he was living in a foreign place. This is what the Lord reveals something to me. He says, this is how you know when you are stepping into your promise and you're right there getting ready to cross over. And so transition, a transition is getting ready to happen. Because everything around you becomes foreign. He told me that today. He said, when it starts to feel foreign, when it starts to look foreign, when you're in, because something that's foreign to you is something that either don't make sense or something that you don't feel a part of or something that's not familiar to you. And whenever you are in an unfamiliar situation, Y'all better come on up in here. I'm already preaching, but y'all got to get it. I said, whenever you feel like you're in an unfamiliar place or a place that's not common to you or a place that's uncomfortable for you, that is the moment where you begin to start thanking God. Why? Because when it feels foreign and when you feel like, let me say it like this, a foreign place makes you feel like it's all you all by yourself. If you've been feeling like you've been doing this thing and going through these things all by yourself, just up now and shout like you ain't never shouted before because your foreign place your foreign place is turning into your promised land it's when it don't seem like it's lining up. Now watch this. Watch this because I love the part where the Lord begins to show us in the scripture. He says he dwelt in that place and he had to dwell in tents. Dwelling in a tent. Which mean, which mean, which mean uh, he was living in a place that was not, he didn't own it yet. Let me say, rental spots. A place of borrowing. Some of us in that place right about now. Come on, talk to me. A place where I feel like I'm borrowing some things or I'm renting some things or, or a tent, something I have to put together just to live in for a moment. Some things that I have to accumulate just to see, just to survive for a season. He dwelt in a tent, but touch two or three and say, your tent is going to turn into your palace. There's some tents that you've been dwelling in. There's some tents you've been experiencing. There's some tents, some things in your life that you just had to piece together for a season just to get your rest, just to survive, just to manage, just to make it. But God said, I'm able to turn a tent into a mansion, a tent into a promise, a tent into purpose. Do I got a witness? Shout, thank you, God. Dwelled in tents. But Isaac and Jacob, the heirs, with him, according to the promise, or of the same promise. Now, this is key, because the Bible says, for he waited. Now, I want to talk to you about the process between Abraham hearing the voice of God to say, go, to the point to where he was waiting for the foundation of the building. There's some things in between that you deal with or experience 
in order for you to get to the fulfillment of what God told you. Can you and I identify some of the places that he went through and identify them as places we've gone through tonight? And that's what we're going to do. Number one, there's one thing you're going to deal with when you are in transition to fulfilling the promise. Or I'm going to say, well, whatever it is that's in the making comes to pass. There's some things you're going to deal with. Number one, you're going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to go through some separations in life. There's going to be some disconnections, disconnections in your personal life. You're going to feel like you're disconnected, and the sad thing, but true thing, but there's going to be some who's going to be disconnected from you. We've learned the story of the fact that Abraham had him a nephew named Lot. We understand that Abraham's nephew Lot had to go. Abraham's nephew went with him for a season. Somebody say for a season. But after a while, both households begin to grow to the point to where they reach capacity. And because they both grew to capacity, they could not manage to be in the same place at that time. So therefore, what happened? They got into fight. This is a good thing. Because wherever there is a battle, there is a separation. Mm, I felt that in my spirit. There is a separation when warfare starts. Whenever there is warfare, that means there is a battle so there can be separation. What is the purpose of the separation? I'm going to say it to the spiritual side of us. Anytime you're dealing with warfare, that means that your spirit is now going through a separation from your carnal. The purpose of my warfare is so that my spirit man can get disconnect itself from the carnal way of living or carnal way of thinking. Anytime there is warfare, there is a disconnection. And the Bible says that Abraham's people and Lot's people, they went into a battle. It was warfare. And in the midst of warfare, the Bible says that Abraham had to sit with Lot and say, look, you go the way you go, I go the way I go because we're family. We can't sit here and keep fighting over the same territory, which is point number two. Whenever there is warfare, that means that territory is being obtained. Territory is being taken over. If you're not fighting, you're not taken. Let me say that one more time. If you're not fighting, you're not taking anything. As soon as you stop fighting, you start losing territory. God said, I'm going to give you land that belongs to you, and you got to deal with opposition. I told you and I this before, that anytime God said, this land belongs to you, you the one that showed up, the giants didn't. When, 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 when God told Abraham to go, he had to deal with opposition. When God told Moses to go, they dealt with opposition. When God told Joshua to go, he went into a land and he dealt with giants in front of him. If there's no fighting, there is no obtaining your promise. Sometimes the battle is among those you don't want to fight with. It's easy to go in and say, okay, we're going to fight against the sons of Anak and all of these different folks because this is my promised land. I'm going to fight against that giant spirit. But there's moments where you're fighting against someone you don't want to have to battle. There's moments where you're fighting against folks who are familiar to you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, those are the fights that's hard for us. Them are the battles that is hard to deal with when, when, when it's your cousin, when, when it's your nephew, when it's your sister, when it's, when it's your brother, when, when it's your mother, when it's your father, when it's your church family. I could deal with the outside hater, but my goodness, Lot is close to me. Listen to me. For all you Abrahams in this quiet church tonight. Stop trying to make a nephew a son. Woo! My goodness. You say, how? Now, don't get it wrong. You can be mama type two nephew and all that. That's not what I'm saying, so don't twist my words. But here's the reality of the story of Abraham. Abraham, Lot's not your son. So he can only go so far with you because he's not your son. I know you want to keep him next to you. Come on, boy. 
We riding together. I'm taking care of you because your daddy ain't here. I know you feel that way. But after a while, because he's not your son, he's going to outgrow you. And his growth is going to cause conflict with you. My goodness, this is Holy Ghost tonight. His growth will conflict with you, and because of the conflict, it's going to cause you to go through all kinds of situations. But if it's your son, you don't got to fight with them. You just pass it on to them. Do I got a witness? Somebody shout hallelujah. So, so he had to deal with the separation between him and Lot. According to Genesis 13, he had to go through a separation. But how many know that whenever you deal with anything in your life on your transition to promise, God always got a word for you. The Bible tells us in chapter 13 that God appeared after the separation. My goodness. It's not until you go through the disconnect that God shows you a new vision. As long as you still got lots in your life, you won't be able to see how far I'm trying to take you. It's in them places where lots are gone. It's in them places where there's a disconnect, a separation between you and those that you really want to be connected to. It's in those moments in your life where it's going to make you ask God when, where, how, and what do you want from me? And it's in those moments where God shows up before you and reveals himself to you and begin to talk to you and tell you the things that you need to know. He said to Abraham in Genesis 13, 14 and verse 15, he says, as far as your eyes can see, whether it's north, south, east or from the west, he says, if you can see it, I can give it. But the key thing is you couldn't see it because you got lot in front of you. Do I got a witness in this house? Touch somebody and say, so stop getting mad at Lot and start praising God for what he's getting ready to do. Somebody got a praise on your lips. Now watch this. Because right after number two, next thing, next thing Abraham dealt with is after being disconnected from the Lot, he had to go back and rescue him. On your journey to purpose and what God's trying to do for you, and as God is making some things out for you, you're going to have to go back and deal with some stuff that you didn't want to have to go deal with. I'm going to utilize Lot more in the capacity of the fact that Lot, you just got through fighting me. Your house fought my house. We separated. But then I got to go back and rescue you. Let me talk to somebody. There's going to be a moment where you're going to have to go back to the one that fought you. You trying to get a promise, but God said you're going to have to go rescue the one that had combat with you. You're going to have to save the house that fought your house. Jesus. And that's going to determine where you go next, Abraham, because you got to have enough love and enough heart to be able to deal with the house that fought your house. Can you handle going back to save a house that hurt your house? His herdsmen was fighting your herdsmen. His house was fighting against your house. And you had to go through a separation and division between you and your lot. And then lot went out and got in trouble. How much love do you got? So in chapter 14, he had to go rescue the lot and the household of lot that was fighting against his house in the beginning. So he goes out, next thing he did, he goes out and he rescues Lot. And after rescuing Lot, he goes through a fight. Now watch this, the next thing he did was after he came out of the battle, touch somebody and say, you always come out victorious. So it don't matter what you go through, you go rescue Lot, God said, I got you anyway. As a matter of fact, the fact of the matter is because you were willing to get up and go rescue your lots from their issues, even though they fought against you before they got into the issue, because you got that common love for my people and for your family and for those that offended you, he said, guess what? I'm going to show up again and I'm going to give you a brand new covenant. Touch somebody and say, God will bring you through it and bless you in the midst of it. The Bible tells us that after he dealt with the battle, Abraham being a righteous man, the Bible says he came and countered a man named Melchizedek. And he sat with Melchizedek, and the Bible says he paid 
a tenth of his earnings paid his tithe. See, Abraham didn't get blessed and not give. If, you, if something in the making, you have to have the mindset to be a blessing no matter what. Somebody say, be a blessing. So Abraham took a tenth of all he gained, all his livelihood, and gave it. And it's interesting on how that verse just shows up out of nowhere. In the midst of the story, that verse just comes out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, this priest shows up. Out of nowhere, him and Abraham have a conversation. Out of nowhere, he starts paying his tithes to this blessing. I'm like, wow, why did that have to show up? Now, the Bible says that Melchizedek was a type of Christ or a, a foreshadow of the Christ to come. Amen. And so we understand that, watch this, anytime you bless the man or woman of God, you have blessed God himself. Somebody say hallelujah. So he moves on from paying his tithes, but then God in chapter 15 appears back to him. God's got a word every time you go through the struggle. Touch your neighbor and say, God's got a word for you. In 15, the Bible says, after all these things, all these things, it says, this word of God came to Abram. Came to him what? In a vision. Touch somebody and say, there's a vision coming. Matter of fact, prophesy over them and say, God's giving you your vision back. You dealt with the lot issues. You dealt with all of these different struggles and situations. And God shows up and gives him a what? A brand new vision. He says, don't be afraid, Abram. He says, why? I'm your shield. I am your reward. I got you. I got your back. You didn't fight and win that battle by yourself. It was me who gave you the skills to overcome. It is me who gave your enemies into your hand. Look somebody in their face and say, God said, I got your back. And something is going to turn out in your favor if you believe him on this evening he said I am your shield which means I'm protecting you and I'm your reward look somebody say he's your reward keep going keep going keep going I'm your shield I'm your reward and he says what don't worry about what you're going through Abraham said well God what use is all these blessings and gifts you've given me and I ain't got no kids. Serving that live in my house from Damascus, Eliezer. He's the one that's going to get all the stuff that I got when I'm done. And God speaks to him and tells him something that's powerful. He says to him, he says, Abraham, listen to me. He says, I'm not going to allow the person that lives in your house to inherit all your stuff. He says, but here's this promise. I'm going to birth a seed through your life. There's a blessing coming out of your loins. There's a promise that's going to be fulfilled out of you. And he says, and the one that I bring out of you, that one, that's the one that's going to inherit what God has given you. That's the one that's going to take this to the next level. Look at somebody and say, there's something inside of you that's getting ready to come out of you. You don't need to have your blessing and your favor through somebody else. You don't need a midwife. God said, I'm a birth it right out of you. You don't need somebody to stand in the middle between you and your birthing. God said, I'm going to do it in this season. The Holy Ghost said, I'm going to birth that thing through you. I'm going to birth that thing out of you. I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to go into dead places. I'm going to go into empty places. I'm going to go into no places. And I'm going to turn them places into things you ain't never seen before. There is a birthing that's getting ready to manifest through somebody's life in this room tonight. I dare somebody to begin to shout right now with a praise on your lips uh, that God and believe that God and shout that God is getting ready to do it for you. Somebody give him a high praise right where you are. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody slap somebody a high five uh, and say neighbor there's a birthday coming. There's a birthday coming. So God told him, don't worry, that the, the, the servant is not going to be your heir. He says, but I'm going to bring your own out of you that's going to be heir to what I promised you. Now watch this. So Abraham, Abraham receives a promise that I'm going to give you a promised seed, a promised child, a promise that's going to be birthed through, watch this, your wife through the one that's close to you. And so the Bible tells us Abraham now is in between blessings. He's in between. Look at your neighbor and say, we're in between blessings. We, I ain't broke. I'm just in between blessings. Huh? 
Come on now. Come on, I ain't by myself. I'm just in between a blessing. I'm, I'm stuck in between favor right now. I, I'm moving from glory to glory. But in between glory and glory, there's a story. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. There's something I got to go through to get to my next level of glory. So I ain't bro, I'm just between blessing. I'm, I'm between. He had to go between blessings. He was in between blessings. And the Bible lets us know that him, who Abraham, he was in the midst of going in between blessing. And in between blessing, he got a little, he got a little, he got a, let me say, uncomfortable. And his wife got a little impatient. And so in, in chapter 16, the Bible tells us that she go to him and she say, look, I ain't got no kids. We've been in this promise for 10 years, and I ain't seen nothing yet. How long have you been in the midst of something and still ain't seen it happen yet? How long have you been feeling like I'm in the middle of this thing? I've been waiting for this thing. You promised me this thing. It ain't happened yet. We've been in this thing long. And I still feel like I'm in the same old, same old, same old, same old situation. And sometimes when you're in between blessings like that, you begin to want to just kind of take matters in your own hands sometimes. You want to just kind of get up and say, let me try something and maybe it'll work. God said, I'm going to do it this way. And you said, well, it's taking too long, God. So maybe I need to try another thing. And maybe you'll do it that way. Touch somebody and say, God don't need your help. When he said, I'm going to do it, you don't need no help. Y'all better come on in here. No lawyer, no doctor, no judge, and nothing can give you what God can give you. God said, I don't need no help. Sometimes we're trying to help God. We be trying to help God out. Like, God, this is the way you're going to heal this leg. You're going to turn. And we get to turning and moving and thinking that, no, sometimes if God don't tell you to move, don't move. God say, be still, be still. We need to know that God don't need no whole bunch of help. God can do what he wants. He can make a rock turn into a man. You think you got to talk to folks and ask them to help you with bill money. God can make a fish say, oh, here it is for you. I mean, it, it don't matter. There's miracles in fish. Somebody say Hallelujah. So sometimes in between blessings, you get complacent. In between blessings, we become impatient and we start doing things of, of our own accord, of our own ideas and our own plan. And that's what Abraham did in 16. The Bible says his wife came to him and said, look, it ain't happened yet. I still ain't got a baby yet. So because I ain't got a baby yet, this is what you're going to do. Sleep with my maidservant. And if you notice the story, he didn't say no. <laughs> he didn't even pray about it. He... It's interesting on how when it comes to doing the things of God, we got to pray about it. The Lord is calling you to do this service for him. I'll pray about that in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. But oh, let somebody say, go sleep with the Hagar. Hey. What no prayer going. He didn't even acknowledge the Lord. He didn't get on his face. I didn't see no burnt offerings. He didn't get on, he didn't do none of that. He just went, sleep with my maidservant. You got it. I, let's make it happen right now. He's probably checking her out. Whether it was okay or not, I heard that's between him and the Lord. But God said, don't do this. Sleeping with folks. He ain't, he ain't questioning it. Are you sure? <laughs> that wasn't even a question. Sleep with her. Yeah, that's a great idea. So the Bible says in verse 1, Sarai, Sarai tells him, Abraham's wife, say, I ain't got no kids yet. So she says to him, go sleep with the Egyptian girl. Go on to sleep with her. She looking, got the Egypt make makeup on everything. You know how she be Egyptian and got all the crowns and all the stuff? She, she all decked out Egypt style, going to sleep with her. And the Bible says, keep going, keep going. Move on to the next verse for me. Thank you. Sarah said to Abraham, God has not seen fit to give me a child, so sleep with her, and maybe I can get my family from her. Look at this. You can never birth your purpose through a slave. You can't birth your purpose through somebody who's bound. So you spend an energy trying to be connected to people in bondage. 
I need to network with folks who's in bondage. I need to seek out and get a word from somebody, but they're in bondage. My Bible says, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. How you gonna get counsel from those who are in bondage? They are bound, but you asking them for advice? They have no clue about the ways of God, but you saying, what must I do? How do I do this? For real? I need to ask people who know God and not folks who's in bondage. You trying to give birth to your promise through a slave. She's a slave woman. As the scripture called her, a bound woman, which means she was in bondage. But I'm trying to connect with something or somebody who's bound. Now catch this. Anytime you command, anytime you try to birth something through somebody who's in bondage, that birthing turns out to be destructive. Aren't we tired of birthing dreams that got mental problems? <laughs> crazy, crazy things are getting birthed. Wild stuff. Uh, I'm almost done. Wild stuff. Let me use it more as like this. Wild experiences come through networking with people in bondage. So Abraham slept with her. They hooked up. Bible says, keep going, please. They went. So, so Sarah said to Abraham, uh, and he took the Egyptian woman. Yes, he did. And she gave her to him, and, 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 and they slept together, and they got busy sinning and doing their thing. Go to the next verse for me, please, verse 4. And it says, keep going, next verse. He slept with her, and she got pregnant. When she learned she was pregnant, look at this, watch this. When she found out she got the baby, she looked down on Sarah. When you start networking, wow, with things or with folks or with stuff that's in bondage, what it's going to do is start fighting against the very thing that's supposed to birth your purpose. It's going to conflict with what's supposed to truly give birth to what's in your life. So the Bible says she began to get attitude. I'm the baby mama. That's, that's my baby daddy. See? You thought you was the only one dealt with baby mama and baby daddy drama, didn't you? You thought it was just you. It wasn't just you. It's in the Bible too. Baby mama drama was right there. Look, it's in the Bible. I'm the one pregnant. I'm the one got the baby. I look better than you. And, 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 and I know telling what she really was saying in between the lines. You ain't never heard him talk like that to you. Yeah. He's got that deep. Y'all got quiet. When she learned she was pregnant, she looked down on her mistress. Keep going, please. She looked down on her. Sarah told Abraham, now see, Sarah, Sarah, you the one that said sleep with her. I didn't deny it. See, this is something that, now I got to throw this as a curveball for my men. Listen, I'm serious. Look, bro, you better learn to pay attention when your wife or when the sisters give you those signs. When she say a thing, you better know she mean another thing. <laughs> I'm being real. I told y'all this before. When, when, when she say, uh, um, ooh, that water look good on TV, that's her way of saying, get me something to drink. If she say, leave, I don't want to have nothing to do with you, what that really mean is, you better not leave this house. If she say, go on and sleep with Hagar, what that mean is, you better not. I'm testing to see if you want her. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, they be speaking some other languages. I'm not, I'm just, y'all sisters, y'all better clap. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I've been, been, I grew up in a household with eight aunties and two uncles. I know. And now I'm, I got three girls and a wife. To know they speak another kind of language. Sleep with her. And as soon as you come out of the room. <laughs> you told me to do it. That's not what I really meant. Sarah 
Sarah told Abraham, it's all your fault. It's your fault. You see, she's doing, it's your fault, bruh. It's your fault that I'm suffering this kind of abuse. I put my maid in the bed with you. And the minute she knows, nigga, look, 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 look. It's your fault I put her in the bed with you. What? Technically, it was his fault, but you can't blame me for what you did. She said, it's your fault I put her in the bed with you. She got pregnant, and now she treats me like I'm nothing. So then she want to use the Lord. Now may the Lord decide who's right and wrong in this. So what did Abraham do with on his way to promise and on his way to his promise on his way of fulfilling or birthing what God told him? He had to deal with family feuds. Some of you are dealing with a family feud right now. Some of you in here right now are dealing with baby mama, baby father drama. Some of you are dealing with exes who are trying to stop you. Some of you are dealing with tenters and temptresses who are trying to stop you. Y'all better come on up in here. Some of you are dealing with family stuff that's trying to hinder your next level. If you are going through stuff right now that seems like it is taxing and testing, I dare you to begin to praise God right now. Because it means you're getting closer, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, you're getting closer to your promise. If you believe that this is your moment to get closer, I dare you to begin to tell God thank you right now. So Abraham dealt with all of this just to get to the point to where he gets to chapter 21 where it was time for his promise to be fulfilled. It was the moment that he was expecting and waiting for after all of the drama, after all of the separations, after all of the situations. Another thing that he had to deal with was famine in his life, which means things were gone that were not there. Another thing he had to deal with the fact that he had to lie to somebody about Sarah being his wife, but technically he called her his sister, and he had to do all of that because he was afraid for his life. Guess what? There will be moments where you're going to be afraid. There's moments where you're going to feel like quitting. There's moments where you're going to feel like it's not going to birth. There's moments where you're going to feel like it's not going to work but I'm here to tell everyone in this place in those moments all you need to do is learn to put your faith and your confidence and your trust in God at that moment when you feel like there's nothing else to do nowhere else to go and no one else to turn to that's the moment where you put your confidence your hope and your faith in God the Bible says in 21 1, 2 and 2 1 and 2 it says the Lord kept his word look your neighbor in the eye and say God is going to keep his word he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he repents. If God make a promise, he is going to keep it. My Bible says that the promises of God is yes and amen by Christ Jesus. Do I got a praiser in the church? He said the Lord kept his word and he did for Sarah exactly what he promised. Somebody touch your neighbor and say he gonna do for you exactly what he told you. He's gonna birth out of you exactly Exactly what he promised. Uh, he's going to turn that thing around. Uh, exactly how he told you. Somebody better give God a shout. Uh, your ministry is going to be birthed. Uh, your business going to be birthed. Uh, your family's coming forth. Uh, exactly the way he promised. Uh, jump up on your feet uh, and give God a shout. Uh, God said there's something in the making. Uh, and until it comes, uh, wait on the Lord. Uh, Praise the Lord. Shout to God. Give him high worship. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Slap two or three a quick five and say the promise is going to be fulfilled. It don't matter what it looks like. If God told you it's a done deal, rejoice and be glad. If God told you it's all right, rejoice and be glad. Do I got a real worshiper? That shouts right now. Shout the promise shall be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Watch this. The Bible says she became pregnant. Put your hand on your stomach tonight. Pray in the spirit. I'm going to speak something inside of your spirit. that's going to come out of you over these next six weeks. Okay. 
she became pregnant. She became pregnant. God revealed himself, spoke to Abraham, and spoke to Sarah, and told them the baby was coming. The miracle was going to be performed. It's going to come to pass. She laughed, but God said, guess what? You're going to call him. God makes me laugh. The name you give this blessing is God makes me laugh. Because the name of Isaac means God makes you laugh. And God said, you're going to birth something that's going to make you laugh. Something going to come out of you against all odds that's going to make you laugh. A door going to swing open for somebody and it's going to make you laugh. A miracle is going to happen inside of your temple that's going to make you laugh. That kind of laughter that's going to say, oh my goodness. Her laughter was not a laughter that she said, I don't believe it. Her laughter was a laughter that say, my goodness, even in this time of my life, God saw fit to do this thing for me. The laughter that he's going to bring you in this next season is the kind of laughter where he says he gives us the oil of joy and the garden of praise. I declare in the name of Jesus that God is going to release joy inside of your belly and the things that's getting ready to come out of your spirit and out of your soul and out of your heart and out of your body. It's going to amaze you and blow your mind. Blow your mind and everybody else's mind who come in contact with you. Get this in your spirit. God told Abraham, I'm going to make something out of you. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And every Everybody in the world is going to be blessed because of you. And I'm going to bless them who bless you. And I'm going to curse them who curse you. And Abraham took that word and began to move forward. And the Bible says that God did exactly what he told Abram he was going to do. I declare to you as you keep on moving, no matter what's coming your way, and as you keep on moving, no matter what darts come against you, as you keep on moving, God said, I'm going to do that thing for you. I need somebody that will praise him right now and begin to thank him for the birthing. Thank him for what he's going to do. Sarah, you get ready because your baby's coming. Get ready for your miracle. Abraham, get ready because you're going to nation. You're going to father nations. Do I got a witness in the church? Somebody get ready. That school is coming out of you. Jobs are coming out of you. Business is coming out of you. Family coming out of you. Healing coming out of you. Joy coming out of you. Somebody get ready. Every knee shall bow. Tongue confess. Jesus is the Lord. As he moves in you, they will surrender to the Lord. As he turns it around, somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody tell him thank you. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Your healing coming out. Your victory coming out. Somebody tell them thank you. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. You tried everything. You tried everybody. You tried every thought that came to your mind. Now guess what? When you have run out of everything, Get ready because God said, I'm going to do a new thing now and it shall spring forth. Somebody tell the Father, thank you. Lift them voices. Shout like you ain't never shouted before. Make the enemy mad. Make the enemy frustrated. Confuse your enemies with your praise. Confuse your enemies with your worship. There is a birthday coming, Sarah. There is a birthday coming, Abraham. There is a shifting in the room, a change in the atmosphere. There's something in the making. 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 It's bubbling in the spirit. It's getting ready to come in the natural. Something's in the making. Something's in the mind. If you don't get it, I got it tonight. I was sitting in the glory of God. Yesterday I was praising him. And I came across that verse in Genesis 12. And I said, oh man, this hit me. Because I said, wait a minute, God. Wait a minute, God. What made Abraham 
get up, make that move, and keep moving, living in tents, dwelling in foreign places, dealing with separations, dealing with all kind of fights and warfare. Abraham went through all of this stuff, God. But what caused him to keep going, to keep moving? And the answer is that last verse in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 10, around 10, where he says this, and it hits me. It says, because his eyes was focused somewhere else. He could keep moving through the fights. He could keep moving through separations. He could keep moving through all of the stuff that was going on in his life, the setbacks. He could keep moving while dealing with living in Egypt for a season. He can keep moving through all of that because look what it tells us. Go, go to that verse, please. Hebrews 11 and 10. Go there. Go back to the original text. It says his eyes or his focus or his vision or his because because when your eyes are focused, when your vision is focused, that means that you, you're not being detoured or you're not being moved. He was focused somewhere else, Cheryl. And it's that focus that made him wait. And what was his focus on? His focus was on a city. Listen to me. He's living in a tent but seeing a city. Let me ask you. Let me ask you something tonight. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see in your home? What do you see in your family? What do you see? Because if you don't see it, then you're not going to patiently wait for it. Most people, most Bible scholars say he was looking beyond this realm and was looking into the spirit realm to get to the heavenly realm. But Abraham received the promise that God was going to bless him in this natural realm, not only the supernatural realm. So Abraham was looking for what God told him he was going to build for him. He was waiting for the city which has foundations. Foundations whose builder and whose maker is God. Touch somebody and say, God got something in the making for you. That's where his vision was. He was looking at, he was waiting for God to do. I'm waiting for God. But you living in a tent, sir. Yeah, I'm waiting for God. But you just lot just left you hanging. I'm waiting on God. You got folks, you got, you got, you living in Egypt for a moment because it's a famine in your life. But I'm waiting for God. Because it don't matter where I am, what I'm going through. God said he's building something and he's making something. He's doing something on your behalf and on my behalf, on our behalf. And because I know this, because I know he's building, because I know he's making something, because I know he's doing something on our behalf. He says, that's why, that's why you and I can keep moving because something is in the making. When you know, watch this. When you know God is making something out of that marriage you in, you stick with it. When you know God is making some out of the ministry that you're involved in, you stick with it because I know God's making something out of this. When you know God is making something out of the business you got, you don't quit on it. You keep doing because you know he's doing something in this. When you know God is making some out of your children, you don't give up on them. You keep on raising them because you know God's got this. Somebody shout something is in the making. Abraham knew that something was in the making. And because he knew this, Elder Ari, he kept moving forward. Through every struggle, obstacle, circumstance, and situation, while your hands are lifted, while your eyes are closed. I'm going to make a special call tonight. I want to make an Abraham call. I want you to move from wherever you are in your seat. Come to the altar, and that step you're getting ready to take it's like Abraham moving from Abram to Abraham, from exalted father to father of nations. You're going through a transition as you're moving your position. Come to the altar and begin to go through your transition right now. Come. 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 And as you're coming, come expecting. Come believing. While you're praying, you're at the altar and you're praying and you're talking to God and you're worshiping God and you are thanking him for what he's making right now. 
there's something he's building and making and birthing. There's something that he's constructing. There's something that he's creating. There's something that he's setting up right now for us. Setting up right now for us. This word, as I was trying to express, hit me so good yesterday because I stopped to think. I said, hold on a minute. All that stuff that came against this man of God, doctor, and nothing can stop it. No matter who tried. No matter what tried. No matter how it tried or how the enemy tried or what tried to stop it, nothing can stop what God said to this man. Nothing. Nothing. And that right there, church, if you get this, and really get this inside of your spirit. Get this in your heart. If you don't get nothing else, that nothing can stop what the Lord has said. Nothing. And when I got that in my soul last night, I said, wait a minute. It don't matter what happens in my life. It don't matter if I got lots and I don't got lots. It, it don't matter if I got this today and don't have it tomorrow. It don't matter. I know this does a fact tonight that nothing is going to stop the plan and the promise of God in my life. It won't stop it. It won't stop it. It can't stop it. Devils can't stop it. Hades can't stop it. Nothing can stop it. And when I got that in my spirit, my joy, my joy level went through the roof. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because sometimes we get depressed, Rose. Because for some odd reason, we are, we get to a place where we start thinking that folks got power to stop something. We start thinking that the boss can dictate what's happening in my life or the lawyers or the cousins or the people around me. We, we sometimes start thinking that what if I don't have that person in my life anymore? Then it's not going to happen. Sometimes we get lost in those things and we lose sight of the fact that the Bible says nothing, nothing can stop the hand of God and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm stretching my hands over all of us, your sons, your daughters in this building, God. This word was for us tonight. You said, God, in your word tonight, something is in the making, and I believe that. There's something being created, something being built, something is being set up for us. Not only in the heavens, but, Lord, in this realm we live in. God, something is being built. Healing is being built in that body right now. Okoba shataraba. Hallelujah, God. Financial increase is being set up for her or him right now. I declare it in the name of Jesus. That family is being built to love one another in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. It's being set up, God. Being set up, God. Being set up. Being established. Being set up right now while we're praying. While we're praying. While we're worshiping. You're doing it, God. You're doing it right now, God. That son, that daughter, God, is being built in the spirit, God, being built on their most holy faith. In the name of Jesus, God. That child, God, that child that's getting ready to be birthed for that family is being built in the spirit and getting ready to transition to the natural. I declare it, God, that business is being built inside of that heart so it can be birthed into this realm. I declare it, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I declare it, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You're doing it, God. You're doing it, God. You're doing it, God. You're doing it, God. Oh, God. And there's somebody unique and set up, being built for that single person right now. Specifically for them. That's your plan for us, God. To give us blessing and favor. You're doing it. You promise Abraham the land. You promise Abraham family. You promise Abraham 
increase financially. You gave Abraham, you told Abraham everything belonged to him and through him everyone will be blessed. I speak that Abraham spirit on everyone in here. Because we are descendants of Abraham through Jesus Christ. And every promise of Abraham, every promise belongs to the body of Christ. So we thank you for it right now, God. We thank you for it right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. While you're worshiping, we love you, God. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Oh, that's good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on. You're the heart of my, of my tenement. Hope for all I say, Jesus, Jesus. You're the center, you're the center of my joy. Come on, say that one more time. Sing that verse one more time all over the building. Help me say, Gee, you're the center, you're the center of my joy. Say all that's good and perfect comes from you. Yes, God. Yes, God. You're the heart. Come on, say it. You're the heart of my contentment, oh, for all I say, Jesus, you're the center of my Father God, as we get ready to transition out of this place tonight, you're the center of our joy. Thank you for what you've spoken over this house. Thank you for the word is true. And every man, Lord, that received this word tonight, every woman that opened their hearts to this word tonight, every child that have opened up to this word tonight shall see the fruit of this word, God. Shall see the harvest, shall see the manifestation of it, Father. So we thank you for it. Cover your people, Lord. Shield your people. As you said tonight, God told Abraham, I am your shield. Thank you for being our shield tonight and our reward. Thank you for your favor and grace. And it's done by faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we call it done. And we say amen. And amen. Come on, give God a clap offering. Give him a clap offering. Give him a praise offering. Hallelujah, God. Hug one another before you leave the building. Love on each other tonight. Thank you for coming to raise the praise this evening. Hallelujah. It is a done deal. God did it. And I believe it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.